Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hi everybody, Dan Oman, Mike Beer, the DRF Race of the Day for Wednesday, April the 27th, race number six at Keeneland, a very competitive two other than allowance race. We're going a mile and a 16th. Let's take a look at this field. Remember to view your free Formulator Pass performances. They're located on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Uh, take a peek and handicap along with us. And when you've made your final determinations, you can play this race in the entire Keeneland Wednesday card with your DRF Bets account, which of course has free formulator pass performances. As usual, Mike, it is a wide open race. The five Skyro, the nine Floriform, these are horses that bring pretty strong buyers, but they're far from the only horses in this race. Yeah, there, there, there are some other decent horses in here. I mean, I do you know, kind of feel like Dan, uh, the nine floor form, who's, you know, still very lightly raced for Mont and Judmont, um, dropping out of a great three. I think he's, to me anyway, clearly the horse to beat in here, but there are other ways to go. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, because I'm curious as to your opinion as to how this race is going to be run. Personally, I don't see a ton of speed in this race. Cellist was at his best last year when he was able to make the lead. I would assume he's going to be aggressive in here. Monition made the pace last time out, but it was a really slow pace, so I'm not sure if that's his preferred running style. Uh, I'm not expecting this pace to be very fast. Yeah, I wasn't either. Um, and maybe it'll play out the way Time Form US has it here. Um, the four Continental Coins, who's going to be a, a pretty big price in this race. I mean, he showed speed once in his life, but um, it's not like he's a super fast horse early. I have no idea who's going to be on the lead early here. Well, let's take the field in program number order. There's a coupled entry in the race, but the only half of the coupled entry in the body of the race is the number one, and that is Cellist. And Cellist did some very good work last year, a stakes winner at Churchill Downs, third in the Belmont Derby. And last time out, Mike, it was his first race off of a lengthy layoff in the Tampa Bay. It was a race that, other than the winner, did not have a lot of closing going on. You can give him the benefit of the doubt from that run. He didn't run very well, but it was his first off the layoff, and maybe the flow is against him. He wants to be closer yeah i think that's true and maybe they will get him closer here um he didn't run great last time but you've already mentioned all the excuses for that race and um at the end of the day he was a pretty good three-year-old i can see this horse i'm um, certainly taking a step forward in this race Drawing the rail in here is the number two, Good Juju. And the good news for Good Juju is he's the only three-time winner in the field. The sort of bad news is that none of those wins have come on dirt. He's only raced once on the turf. It was his last start. It was his first race off of a long layoff. And maybe just the race flow didn't work to his favor. Uh, he is going to have to do a lot better. Yeah, he didn't really show anything um, in his turf debut last time. It was a race that was just dominated up close in there. Um, and the pace wasn't very fast, um, but this horse just didn't do any running at all. I'll give him another one on the turf to see if he handles the surface at all. In a competitive race like this, you could do worse than looking for price horses. And I think the three Absom is mildly interesting. Arad Ortiz, Michael Maker for this uh, son of hard spun. And he was getting good in the summer of last year. He won at Saratoga. He ran okay at Kentucky Downs. And I think he could pick apart his last two races. His race at Keeneland two starts back was a yielding turf course. I don't think he had the greatest trip. And his last start, he was likely just overmatched against Mira Mission off the layoff. That horse came back to win the graded Canadian turf with a triple digit buyer. Yeah, that's true. Amir Mission's uh, been in very good form. The rest of that field, you know, I'm not so sure about that. This horse just didn't really run that well in there. Um, he was pretty good last year, though, Dan. He did. I remember him winning that uh, entry level allowance at Saratoga. That wasn't my favorite race of that meet. I didn't love that field. Um, he ran okay in there, though, to get the job done. He's got figures that say he's a player in here. And um, I think he's got enough tactical speed, too. So at 15 to 1, you could do worse than this horse. Time Form US believes the four continental coins will be out there on the lead. This horse has only raced once previously in a turf route, and he was a winner at the fairgrounds two starts back, beating two next out winners. The sixth place horse would come back to win a one other than with an 83 buyer. Um, he still lightly raced, Mike, with some upside, and maybe he'll have a pace edge. 
Yeah, it's funny because he was a winner on that uh, turf route two starts back without the lead coming from off of it in a pace that wasn't that fast. Um, so we'll see what they decide to do with him here. Um, obviously, you know, just because he has the only the one turf route and he ran fine in that race, you could project some improvement for this horse. Skyro is another lightly raced four-year-old, and I think he could project some improvement for him as well. Uh, he's really took a step forward since moving to the turf, including his last race. Let's take a look at that effort. Second off a long layoff at Gulfstream in a, in a second-level allowance race. He's got a big look at this turning into the stretch as the favorite, Mike, and he just can't get by. Yeah, he did have a good trip in here. He just sort of sat behind that winner there, proven strategies on the lead. He came for him um, at the top of the stretch, and he just he's never getting by this horse. He doesn't change leads in the stretch, and he just can't get by. I guess it was an okay effort at the end of the day. Um, I actually liked his, his race off the layoff a lot better than that one, uh, where he chased down another loose leader that day, um, a horse that came back to win his next start. I don't know. This horse could obviously win here. He might find himself on the lead, and he's got plenty of early speed. I think that's a, an excellent, excellent point because two starts back off the layoff, he showed fresh speed. He was able to stay close. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if Gaffalione gets him close to the lead, if not outright on it. And he ran a 92 buyer in the race we just saw. LeBlanc is the number six. This horse uh, has been campaigning on synthetics in his last few races. And he ran okay in his most recent start for Paolo Lobo. He finished ahead of a couple of next out winners. One horse that would come back to win on dirt with an 86 buyer. But something tells me he might be better on the synth and there are some class questions it's a fair um argument that that's a better surface for him i mean he i like his last two starts and i thought he ran pretty well in both of them the two starts prior to that going a mile and a quarter um that just might have been a little too far for him and listen it's not like they've only run him on turf twice um it's they were both off of little little layoffs and i don't think he ran terribly in either one of those races this horse is not impossible Trainer Nacho Correas is going to add blinkers to the seven Buy Me Candy. And earlier in Buy Me Candy's career, he raced with blinkers. You can see that with your lifetime past performances on Formulator. And he had success with them and actually showed a little bit of tactical speed. Now, this is a horse that settles for minor awards more often than not. But this is going to be his third race back. And I don't mind him on the turf. I just wonder if he actually might want a little further. It's interesting. I don't, that's a good question about what his best distance is. I like him coming back to turf and I know he's run fine on the synthetic. I, I like him coming back on the grass here. This is a horse who I thought early on his, in his career in particular, I thought he had a ton of potential and obviously he never delivered on it. And when you bring up the distance question, Dan, the more I looked at him, the more I wonder if going shorter just might not be way better for this horse. They started him out in, in shorter races and basically all of last year, they just went long, a mile and an eighth or longer. And every one of those starts, and he ran okay, but he didn't get any better. I wonder if, if uh, cutting back a little bit will help this horse. Be here is the number eight. This horse is going to have to overcome a lengthy layoff. We haven't seen him since 4th of July weekend in the grade three Kent at Delaware, uh, a race in which he took some money. He faced a good group of three-year-olds that like the King would come back and place in the Saranac at Saratoga with an 85 buyer, place in the Bryan station at Keeneland with a 90, but he's returning off a lengthy layoff and he's going to be facing older horses. Right. And the only, you know, turf win of his career came uh, via disqualification there um, at Delaware. Probably didn't, he didn't even come close to winning that race, but he was awarded uh, first in that spot. I don't know, Dan. Um, he's very lightly raced. He has a huge pedigree. Um, you know, I don't particularly like either one of his turf starts, but there's a lot of upside here. I just feel like he's a real wild card in this race at a big price. And if they just sort of overlook him, maybe I'll try to get him in there somewhere. The nine Floriform is likely the horse to beat. He was entered ambitiously by Bill Mott at Tampa Bay last time out, considering it was his first race off a very long layoff. They ran him in the grade three Tampa Bay. Let's watch the stretch run. Jockey did everything right. I think he sensed there wasn't a lot of pace. He wanted to get him out uh, into the race early. He was sitting in second behind Get Smoking, and he just finishes evenly. Uh, he faced a real nice horse. Cheryl Spite obviously would come back to win the grade one maker's mark with a 103 buyer this was a solid effort the horse has tactical speed he wanted keeneland two back yeah i thought he ran okay in here uh, for all the reasons that you just mentioned dan and you know getting coming back off a layoff like that and then chasing a horse like get smoking on the lead get smoking is really underrated and he's really fast and i feel like this horse did pretty well in there to almost catch him for second at the end it was a good place to start for him um he showed a lot of potential early on i really liked his two turf wins um early on last year it's unfortunate that he missed so much time 
Another price source to consider is the 10 Monition because he is far from exposed. He won his first two starts utilizing different running styles. Off the pace in his debut at Ellis, he handled the Keeneland turf course just fine in winning on the lead in his second lifetime start. They tested him in a stakes race at Aqueduct. He caught a wet turf course. Maybe it was a little bit of too much too soon. He faced a hot horse at the time and never surprised. Last time out at the fairgrounds, I don't know what to make, Mike. I couldn't find any excuses. You can't go slower on the lead in that race, but he faced a good bunch. Couple of next style winners, one winning at Keeneland with an 89 buyer. Yeah, and the horse that wound up out finishing him in the stretch there, uh, Pine Knoll was the favorite. And he just sat right up on the pace with him. Um, and this horse just couldn't fight him off at the end. I thought all in all, he ran fine in that race. The more I watched it, Dan, the more um, I sort of got interested in the horse to finish third in that race, who was also eligible for this race. So he's not going to be in the field. But if that horse made it in, I could take a look at him. I have a feeling that Monition, we've yet to see his best. He has some potential. Point Me By is up next. This horse has been challenged in his career by trainer Eddie Keneally, and why not? He won the Bruce D in his third lifetime start. Now, maybe that wasn't the strongest grade one race in the world at Arlington Park, but he got it done. The Woodchopper two starts back. I thought he ran fine, not great. Last time out in the fairground stakes. Kind of a weird race, I thought, Michael. Of course, the one that race was a million to one. He pushed the speed of two Emmys who won the quote unquote Arlington Million. And that horse was nowhere at the end. It was a weird race. It was a weird race. The source obviously didn't do much in there. Um, I guess I wouldn't hold that against him too much. Um, I just don't really like any of his other races uh, all that much. That I mean, he's run fine in some of them, and I do think he's a contender in here. I'm just not a big fan of the source. Now, the final horse entered in the body of the race. There are several also eligibles that deserve consideration if they draw into the body of the race, especially the horse that Mike mentioned, is the 12. This is Palazzi going out for Marcassi. You've always had a thing for this horse. Yeah, it's true. And I, when we get the picks up there in a minute, you'll see that I've got him in there again, Dan. Um, I could certainly give him another chance in here. I, he's just one of those horses. He's his own worst enemy. He doesn't have any speed at all. He's always trying to close from way out of it. And it, as you can see from his uh, overall past performances, it rarely works out for him. But he's kept good company, and he has held his own with those horses when, when things go his way. If he can pull a trip in this race, and it won't be easy, his running style post-12, uh, there's plenty working against him. This horse is okay. I assume they're just going to take him back to last, and that could be the worst thing that could happen if there's no pace. But if there's pace, I agree with you 100% that this is a horse that you can use because I thought his race in the Saratoga Derby, the running line may not see it. It wasn't bad at all, and he was facing a very, very good field, and I don't take that Kentucky Downs race seriously at all over a yielding, to, uh, undulating turf course. His last race was his first off the layup. You could use Palazzi if you believe the pace is fast, but he might be up against it from a post and trip standpoint. Let's take a look before we get to our top selections. I want to remind everybody, please subscribe to the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel if you haven't already done so, because we've got great content coming up, Kentucky Derby, right around the corner. Let's take a look now at our top selections for the Wednesday DRF race of the day. We both like Flora Foreman here. I think he still has some upside. I think he has some class. I think he has some tactical speed. I don't think he'll be a good price. I don't either, but I'm taking him anyway because I think this is a good spot for him. I, there's so, there are some good horses in here. I think this horse has a chance to be, um, you know, a legit uh, graded stakes kind of horse down the line. And so I'm taking him on top. I'm going to try to get the seven and the twelve in there with him. Yeah, buy me candy the seven, Palazzi the twelve. Interesting price horses for Mike to get in there. I'm a little bit curious to see what Chellis does off of the layoff, Mike. I'd like this horse to show a little bit of speed. Nine yeah. seven twelve one for Mike. Nine five one ten for me. It's your Wednesday DRF race of the day. It's at Keeneland.